CubeSats are a different tool in the toolbox, and we haven't really quite discovered how they're gonna be used yet. This is really paving the way in, in understanding how we can use CubeSats to fit into our architectures, to, to work in our ASMT, to work into our space missions in ways we haven't really practiced. CubeSat is a containerized nano satellite. Uh, it was uh, based on a standard that was developed back in 1999. And what we mean by containerization is a, uh, providing a, uh, a common interface across launch vehicles. And it's a, the CubeSats are deployed out of what we call a poly pico satellite orbital deployer. It's, it's essentially a, a jack in the box, the size of a loaf of bread. Um, it has a, a spring in the bottom and a hinged plate on the top. And so um, when it receives the deployment signal, the top opens and the, the CubeSat is ejected by the spring um, and it goes into its desired orbit. A Peapod has a standard mechanical interface and it drives what the actual external volume dimensions are for a cube satellite. And as long as you meet the design specifications of that internal volume, which is defined by the Peapod, uh, you can fly and go on orbit on practically any launch vehicle um, that exists today. So the NRO um, has an infrastructure-based approach to CubeSats in that um, we provide a government bus, two generations of colony bus, we provide a ground architecture through our MC3 ground stations, and we also provide launch opportunities for government and academic CubeSat projects. So we, we have an integrated approach that provides um, basically a, a end-to-end -end service for a CubeSat user in the government. To the infrastructure is there, and now I just put a mission in. So for the university folks, space was unattainium because I had to build this whole infrastructure up every time. CubeSats are allowing us an opportunity to explore that trade space of a different conops, of space as an infrastructure that services missions, not a mission that I have to build a space infrastructure around. One thing that CubeSats and containerized nanosats offer is this uh, ability in a short time frame to experience end-to-end -end design. So a given engineer or program manager can see a project from uh, design to uh, construction to orbital deployment um, in, in a short time span of time so you see the whole process. And the same goes true for academic partners as well. Uh, students can see a project from start to finish within the course of an undergraduate career. So CubeSats are really providing a methodology to train the next generation on, on a significantly lower cost, lower risk. And that combined with, with how it's affecting imagination really is reaching to the next generation of space and allowing us to pursue things that were only in Dreamscape five, ten years ago. The technology is advancing on a miniaturized scale so quickly that if you have an eight to ten year development cycle, you're locked into older technology by definition. Whereas with a shorter development cycle, you'll incorporate advances just by when you're acquiring products and when you're acquiring long lead items. Um, so the, the faster you can develop things and get them on orbit, just the more recent the technology will be on a, uh, a periodic basis of once or twice per year, uh, launch a technology, fly it, operate it, receive data on how it performs, be able to modify it on the ground and fly the next generation within a year. Of course, the more um, the government and, and the academy demand uh, technological innovation to fit in a smaller form factor, uh, it feeds itself. So the, the more advancements come and the more there's demand in the market, the more new vendors come onto the scene and the more, um, the more opportunities there are to do innovative things on orbit. I, I like to call it boxes of innovation. If I have a good demarcation point, if I have a good touch point to that infrastructure, then the only thing that's holding things back on that other side is imagination. Uh, one example that we have is uh, a cube satellite that's on orbit now. It was deployed off of NRO L36. It's called Ray, and it's part of the uh, space-based telescopes for actionable refinement of ephemeris program. The ultimate uh, concept for STAIR is to create um, a no multiple nodes to police LEO uh, to improve uh, the understanding of orbital debris and um, uh, controlled satellites as well. There are collisions on orbit and debris that was spread from this that uh, threatens um, assets such as the International Space Station. There's uh, several pathfinders that we're flying right now. Eventually, uh, 
Uh, the plan is to lead to a constellation of 18 or 24 uh, LEO observers that are part of this STAIR network. It's hard to say what will happen in five to ten years, and that's what's exciting about this program, is that the technology can drive us to places we would not have anticipated uh, even five years ago. Definitely containerized nanosats uh, are here to stay. Uh, how the NRO chooses to use them in the toolbox is to be determined. Um, there's a lot of exploration going on right now and learning going on with the community to uh, determine what the most uh, uh, utility is with flying these containerized systems. If I can work on providing a launch service that allows you to get all these CubeSats up there, if I can provide you a common bus that people can integrate with, if I can provide you a command and control that once you get up there, for a marginal cost, now I can fly your mission, then what mission can't I do? The CubeSat program delivers intelligence value, mission support, and innovation. The technology can drive us to places we would not have anticipated. We are leaders in innovation.